Joining me now from the White House is David Seamus, Deputy Senior Advisor to the President. David, thanks so much uh, for joining us. I appreciate it. I want to start by asking you about some Obama administration email CNN obtained from before the healthcare.gov launch. Uh, it suggests these emails that there were individuals uh, in the government and with one of the contractors concerned about some fundamental promises the administration made, particularly about securing people's private health information. In one email dated on September 10th, George Linares from CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, indicates that the site is storing personal details. And he writes, quote, this process in itself contradicts all of prior CMS statements. Now, this was written before the launch. Can you assure us that whatever concerns there were about the personal identifiable information, the PII, that we were told would not be on the hub of healthcare.gov, that all that was worked out and none of this personal information can be assessed uh, f through, the compu through computers, through the internet? That's exactly right, Jake. Uh, there is no PII on the federal data hub. The federal data hub is basically a conduit uh, that's used basically to determine eligibility uh, and basically see what kind of subsidies and other information are available to consumers. Jake, as you know, um, the system uh, undergoed a tremendous amount of testing around security. It met the conditions of the Federal Information Security Management Act. It complies with the standards uh, for security, uh, and it complies with the same standards of security that are in place for Social Security. Uh, as we identify any problems that occur, we continue to address them. But I can say very, very directly, there's no PII on the federal data hub, period. All right, All right David. The Washington Post uh, has reported also that since October 1st, about a third, they estimate, of those who have signed up for plans on the site have errors in their enrollment records. That would mean some folks who think they've successfully signed up for insurance might not be getting what they expect on time. The information that's given to the insurance companies is incorrect. Uh, I, I know that the White House disputes that number. Can you tell us what the number is? So what I can tell you, Jake, is what the process that folks are undergoing right now, which is an important process, that's a collaboration between CMS uh, and the insurance companies. Just over the past weekend, they put in new fixes. And for folks at home, essentially the 834 is a way to transfer the enrollment from healthcare.gov to the insurance companies. And there were some errors uh, that it developed in the first couple of months. Uh, that's significantly getting better. And now there are teams uh, that are working through these on a daily basis to make sure it's even better. One final point uh, on this. Uh, and I believe CMS has spoken to this, that over the course of the next two to three weeks, CMS is going to be reaching out to folks who are enrolled uh, through the federal marketplace uh, just to confirm with them to make sure that they've made the connection with the insurance company so that they're covered on January 1st. So that's something that we're going to work through to make sure happens with folks. David, I want to play some sound uh, from uh, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte from earlier today. From Obamacare to immigration, the current administration is picking and choosing which laws to enforce. Now, I think when it comes to Obamacare, the president uh, has been criticized, and, and Mr. Goodlatte was referring to uh, delaying the employer mandate and other things that the president has done because they weren't, you weren't going to be able to make deadline. What exactly is the authority for the president to decide which parts of Obamacare to enforce at, at which date? Jake, as the representative knows, uh, and as folks during that committee know, the president is using his prosecutorial discretion that's built into the law to make sure that there is a smooth implementation uh, of the law. That's part of the function of making sure that you roll things out uh, smoothly and importantly. Just have one uh, point to make on uh, the hearing, such as the one today. What is striking is that over the course of the past two months, while we try to fix uh, the website and make sure that the million visits that went on to healthcare.gov, that those people have a good experience and are able to buy insurance, we're trying to make this better when there is no alternative that's being proffered in any of these hearings uh, from House Republicans and specifically that committee today. So everything that we are doing uh, is consistent with the law and is with the intention of making sure that the American people have access to affordable quality health care. And that's the whole point of the Affordable Care Act. David, one million people visited the site yesterday, but I, I, I believe I read that 18,000 signed up. That's a very low rate of people actually enrolling uh, for Obamacare, enrolling in the Affordable Care Act, if you have a million visitors. 
So, uh, Jake, first of all, I'm not going to confirm uh, how many enrollments there were yesterday. Uh, we'll release those numbers later on in the month. But here's uh, what I think we learned in the Massachusetts experience in 2007. And John Kingsdale, who ran that, speaks to this very eloquently. When people go onto a website to look at insurance products, they go back eight, nine, ten times. They spend 20 minutes or 30 minutes looking at their different options because this isn't an impulse purchase. It's about making sure that you find the plan that works best for you. And but David, confident... if that's the case, David, if that's the case, why not just share the numbers? We, 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 the president has talked many times about transparency, and it seems like the White House releases numbers that are good uh, when they want to, uh, and bad ones uh, they hide as much as possible. We don't know how many of those 834 forms uh, are faulty. We don't know how many people uh, for sure enrolled in Obamacare, but you're out there talking about a million visitors. Why not just put all the information out there? The American people are grown-ups. So, uh, so, Jake, in terms of releasing numbers, this is like Medicare. It's like Medicaid. It's like the monthly release of jobs numbers. We said from the beginning that once a month so we can do quality control to make sure that we've got the numbers in from the different states, we will release the numbers and we will do that again in December for the month of November. Uh, we are working night and day to make sure, and it's, we've crossed an important threshold with healthcare.gov, to make sure that it's up and it's running and it's functional. And we'll continue to release some information like today's uh, announcement from CMS that just in the month of October, Jake, just in October, 1.46 million people were made eligible for Medicaid. Now that's part of a regular release of information, and we'll have more in enrollment in a couple of weeks. David Seamus at the White House, thank you so much for your time. Jake, thank you. Coming up on The Lead.